I'm astronaut Mike Massimino, and I am going to attempt to explain to you what Jeff Bezos' flight will be like in just about the same amount of time that it will take him to take that flight. T minus 50 seconds until takeoff. The Blue Origin flight is only gonna be 11 minutes. You get inside, there's no pilots, it's totally automated. Everything should work perfectly. If it doesn't, there are backup systems, but there's really no human intervention with that spacecraft, and it'll come back to Earth. So it's like you get in the ride, go up, weightless, look at the planet, look around a little bit, and then come back down. Jeffrey Bezos is set to leave July 20th with his brother, a space tourist who paid $28 million, and Wally Funk, who is 82 years old. This is nine days after Richard Branson took his Virgin space flight. Oh my gosh. So let's start off with a countdown from Mission Control. T minus 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Command engine start, two, one. First liftoff, the crew will strap in and prepare for their launch. The engines will light and take them off the launch pad. I think the most important thing to, uh, during liftoff is to pay attention, be alert, and don't touch anything you're not supposed to. I, that's what I would say. You know, don't say, hey, I wonder what this button does. Don't do any of that. I went to space on the space shuttle. Uh, the main engine started up first. We were on our backs waiting there on the launch pad for a couple hours making sure everything was okay. And the main engine started and he ran for about six seconds. But after those six seconds, the solid rocket boosters would light and they're like giant sticks of dynamite. You could not turn those off. So once they light, you're on your way. My first launch seemed like a blink. I didn't even, I didn't even it went by so quickly. Everything was so new. But the second time, I, I felt like I was a little more uh, engaged because I knew what was gonna happen and I just wanted to enjoy it as best I could. And I think that's the, that's the important thing. This is a very rare experience, getting a chance to be under powered flight with a, you know, a big rocket motor <laughs> underneath you, taking you away from the planet. T plus two minutes. Flight hits Mach 3. After a couple minutes, the G-forces build up the maximum Gs that we took were three Gs. Now what that means is that's three times the force of gravity that's hitting you in the chest. You're on your back because that's the best way to take that G-force is right in the chest. And it feels like a pile of bricks is on your chest, like you have three big dudes sitting on you. That's kind of what it felt like. Three times my body weight hit me in the chest. And that lasted for about two and a half minutes. When you experience zero gravity is dependent on when your engines stop running. So I was under those G-forces, and then the engines cut, and it got really quiet. And all the violence, all the shaking stopped, and everything started to float. I was still strapped in my seat, but my arms just rose up like this. T plus three minutes. Capsule separates from booster. Zero G begins. Next, the crew will enter zero gravity. They will experience weightlessness for a few minutes. One of the first things I noticed when I got to space was I didn't feel so well. I just felt nauseous and I knew this could happen. It happens to most astronauts because your inner ear is not working. It works on gravity. So the vestibular system, inner ear, zero gravity, nothing's happened. It's telling the brain you are perfectly still. But as you're moving around, your eyes are saying, oh no, you're not, you're moving around. So you can get that conflict and it can lead to disorientation and nausea. My advice to anyone going on one of these trips is medicate. Take the nausea medicine that's available to you. They have pretty good, pretty good nausea medicine these days. Ask uh, the medical officer, there's gotta be someone that knows about that stuff working at these companies. What do you suggest? Take that stuff. And uh, I think that'll help you enjoy the experience. Because why take the chance? You might unstrap and feel really awful and it's only a couple minutes. So that's what I would do. T plus four minutes, light reaches apogee and the flight will reach its apogee, which means its highest point away from the planet. They'll be able to unstrap, float around a little bit and take a look out the window. So we would wanna be really careful. When you first get to space, you're kind of out of control. When I first got to space, I went to look out the window and I, I felt kind of out of control. I, it was just, it's like wanting to walk again. You're just moving around and I grabbed something 
and I grabbed a circuit breaker, which I wasn't supposed to grab and pulled it out. And it wasn't supposed to happen. Like, so like, oh my goodness, the first thing I've done in space was something wrong. But of course I reported it you know, to my commander in the ground and said, don't worry about it. It was just a switch that really wasn't needed at that time. So I just put it back in. But it made me realize you gotta be careful around here. Watch what you're holding on to. So if you get out of control, you're liable to do something you might regret. So you wanna be really careful about that. You usually wanna go slowly and be under control so you can enjoy the experience and can move around more, actually more efficiently and quickly when you, when you do that. So go slow to speed up. And that's what I wanted to do on my first space flight, of course, was unstrap and take a look at the planet. And that's what I did. I got a chance to, to see the planet from space for the first time. And that's the moment that you're looking forward to. The overview effect is the term that is used for the experience that people who have gone above the Kármán line, astronauts, when they view the planet, you're seeing it from a, from a different perspective and it can change the way that you feel about the Earth or, or role in the universe or the beauty of our planet. And I, that, all those different emotions and feelings that people have tried to describe over the years since we first started sending people to space has been uh, kind of put in this category of the overview effect. And I think most people feel that as well where you see the thinness of the atmosphere and you see the beauty of our planet. I think mainly it's, a, it's an emotional experience of what it's like to look back on our home uh, from space. T plus six minutes. Time for re-entry. Astronauts rebuckle. Then the crews will start their descent back toward Earth. As they get closer to the planet, the G-forces will build up again and they'll start to feel heavy. They may have to be in weightless going from zero to something feels a lot more than it than it would be. Your your whole your body's is getting used to that again. And that we were, but I was in space for a couple of weeks. I don't know what it's going to be like for them. It'll be an interesting question. What was it like after just being there for a few minutes? Did your body have to go through another orientation to readjust to gravity? So we'll see what happens. But it's more a function of of slowing down and, and having the Earth pull you back in than it is of any particular altitude or speed. Tomorrow's a big day for you. And I mean, you've had all kinds of big days, but is tomorrow kind of the biggest day for very you? Very special, at all? very special. And that's because we're landing. So for, on my flights uh, on the space shuttle, when we were coming back to Earth, you know, we, we were orbiting at 17,500 miles an hour. And so what we did is we pointed our rocket ship, the, the rocket itself, the back end of the space shuttle where the engines were, not the main engines, but these two big engine bells on the side, and we would burn those engines. We'd, we'd, we'd light them up. What that did is that propelled us in the opposite direction and kind of acted like putting on the brakes. And so as you, as you slow down, you'll get lower and lower, and then eventually you'll pick up the Earth's atmosphere as, you, as your altitude lowers. That builds up friction, a lot of heat. In the case of the shuttle, it's about four to 5,000 degrees outside of the space shuttle was got really hot. We felt fine inside, but I could see the tail. I, I held up, I was on the flight deck, and I could see uh, by holding up a mirror, I was able to look out the window and see the tail of the space shuttle. And I was filming it for a while. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. It looks like the tail is almost on fire. And I was like, that's kind of scary, enough of that. And then we got below that, and we picked up the horizon of the Earth again. What's different about the Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson space flights compared to what we've done up till now is that this truly, I think, marks the entry point of commercial space flight. Unlike uh, spaceships that carry astronauts to the International Space Station, they're typically flying for their governments, this is a new way that people can get to space with a commercial company and a private enterprise. T plus nine minutes, parachutes deploy and then they will land with a parachute very close to where they took off. You know, kind of like almost an amusement park ride. We got lower and lower, and at one point we picked up, like the, as we were picking up the atmosphere, it almost seemed like we were in a cloud. We were just exciting the particles around us. So it was almost like we were in a soup. We were like in a, what we would say, like when you fly on an airplane, you're in a soup, you're just in a cloud, you can't see anything. And I, I had no sensation of motion. You know, we still didn't have G's really building up at that point but I had no visual indication out the window that we were moving at all. And I felt like I was perfectly still. No indication of motion at all. Until I looked at our velocity indicator, we were still going about 12,000 miles an hour at that point. That's the only thing that told me we were still moving. T plus 10 minutes, capsule lands. Finally, touchdown. 
the crew will have completed their journey to space and back. I think they're pretty much going to be able to get off and walk away just like they're getting off an airplane um, in, both the, in both the Blue Origin and the uh, Virgin Galactic uh, examples. Their body hasn't had any deterioration. It hasn't been much of an adaptation because it wasn't very long to zero gravity. So I think they'll come back and be in, in, uh, in one gravity without, without any issues. Uh, we had been in space in my case on the shuttle. Usually, typically it was about a two week journey. That's what it was for me because you're adjusting to gravity. But that was the goal. You wanted to do that and look up and point to the spaceship and not fall over. You know, like I was a zombie or Herman Munster or somebody like walking around, Frankenstein or moving around. So I wouldn't fall over very slowly. On my flights, once we landed, you know, you're, you're back on the runway now. You're grateful to be home and safe. I don't think you're gonna need the same physical conditioning that we need, uh, that I needed when I was an astronaut to fly to space. I think it's gonna be more like the amusement park restrictions. Mission accomplished. I would love to go on one of these flights with Richard Branson or with Jeff Bezos or with anyone else that was interested in going, but I don't wanna pay that much money for it. So I'm not paying for that experience, but I would be happy to go if they want an interested observer or maybe some help. You know, I could be the flight attendant. I'm happy to do whatever they would want me to do on one of these flights. I would love to do it. But uh, that the ticket price is a little much for me right now. Uh, I, I think I'll wait till the price comes down if I have to pay for it. Even though only it's a couple minutes, they will get a chance to look around, to look at our planet, to experience weightlessness, and especially that view of our planet and what it looks like from space. They'll be able to get a pretty good look at it, even though for just for a couple minutes, we understand a lot about how our planet works by being here on the planet. But there's still a lot of big questions like, where did we come from? How did we get here? And how to best take care of our planet that I think we can only answer by traveling to space because it gives you that different perspective. So I'm interested to see what these two guys in particular who are very interesting people, very successful entrepreneurs, have experienced a lot of things in their lives. I want to find out how this experience of flying to space will have changed them.